Hi guys, we're going to do one of our clinical anatomy series uh, videos and as you might know the purpose of the clinical anatomy series is just to show you how anatomy can come alive and to show you how you can better understand the body to actually treat the body, help the body, and do things for the body when you understand anatomy and physiology. Okay, so today the thing we're going to talk about is how to get rid of hiccups. Okay, everybody knows what a hiccup is. They're mainly just annoying, usually not a sign of a health problem per se. Although there was a story a year or so ago where there was a teenage girl that could not get rid of her hiccups. She had hiccups for weeks and weeks and weeks and nobody could help her. That's kind of rare, but uh, nonetheless, hiccups are more of an annoyance. And the secret to really getting rid of the hiccup is gonna be we're gonna wanna relax the diaphragm. We're gonna wanna stimulate it and get it to relax, okay? So the first thing we have to know about anatomy is, of course, uh, what nerve innervates the diaphragm? So many of you might know that that nerve that controls the diaphragm is the phrenic nerve, okay? The phrenic nerve is, you know, and, and the, well, the next question is going to be then is we are going to want to stimulate the phrenic nerve, okay? And the question is how do we get to the phrenic nerve? That's going to be the next thing, okay? Because we're going to want to stimulate this nerve, which is then going to calm the diaphragm down. Now, let me say a little bit more about the phrenic nerve real fast. There's a, there's a saying in anatomy that says C3, C4, C5 keeps the diaphragm alive. So C3, C4, C5 cervical spinal nerves are going to supply the nerves, okay, that form the phrenic nerve. So this C3, C4, C5, okay, cervical spinal nerves are going to form, again, the phrenic nerve. Now, that is again cervical, right? Three, cervical four, cervical five, which means the phrenic nerve, even though the diaphragm is quite low, it's right below our thoracic cavity, right? It actually separates thoracic from abdominal cavities. Even though it's low, the phrenic nerve originates from the cervical region of the spinal cord. So if we trace it, if we know our anatomy and we trace it, it those three spinal nerves are gonna to merge to form the phrenic nerve right over our sternocleidomastoid muscle. And I'm gonna kind of make it poke out here so you can see it. This phrenic nerve is gonna run right on top of that sternocleidomastoid, <clears throat> excuse me, muscle. There's gonna be a right-sided phrenic nerve and of course there'll be a left-sided phrenic nerve. So what are we gonna to do to stimulate this nerve? We are going to massage the lower portion of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. There's different ways to find it, right? If you flex your head, turn to the opposite side, kind of pokes out because you're because you're actually contracting the muscle, sternocleidomastoid. That's one way. Or just to find, I've got a collared shirt on here, but if you if you find your uh, sternoclavicular joints, you can just move uh, superior a little bit to again the same muscle. Okay, the sternocleidomastoid. And you're going to massage the sternocleidomastoid muscles uh, on <clears throat> uh, uh, somebody obviously with hiccups, asking them to breathe nice and slowly, right? Getting them to calm down. And that will stimulate the phrenic nerve and, of course, calm the diaphragm. So, as always, anytime we're doing anything clinically, uh, this is for informational purposes only. Anytime you do any type of treatment on yourself or anybody else, you should always consult your physician. But as always, we just want to see how anatomy can come alive. So stay tuned for more, and of course, good luck and good study.